the glitz and glamour of Bollywood, one of the world's largest film industries. With its mix of bright colours, exaggerated melodrama and over-the-top dance routines, it's the ultimate form of escapism. Millions watch their idols on the big screen, but for those chasing their own Bollywood dream, the reality can be dark and sleazy. He started telling me, for an actress, you should be happy to have sex. Sleep with me and if you think, if you want to do this part. This is one Bollywood story most are afraid to share. People don't listen to you if you're nobody. Two, if you're a celebrity and you talk a bit about it, it only becomes a headline. People are so scared because here, yeah, some people are regarded as gods. Last year, Hollywood had its Me Too moment. Actresses went public, alleging they were sexually harassed and assaulted by producer Harvey Weinstein. It was a moment of reckoning. Women and men came together to call out sexual abuse in America's film industry. But many wondered why here in India, Bollywood didn't follow suit. It's not because there isn't a problem. I've spoken to many in the industry who say that there's a huge issue when it comes to sexual harassment. Every year, thousands of budding actors and actresses head to Mumbai, India's film capital, for their shot at stardom. Often from small villages, they arrive with no contacts and little experience. A girl from outside is the easiest target because she doesn't have her family here and most, most probably the family must not be supporting as well. So she has come against the wishes of her family and she's alone and she's looking for work. She needs money. This 25-year-old aspiring actress told me about a time she met a Bollywood agent six years ago. She asked us to conceal her identity and change her voice because she's terrified of speaking out. This person bluntly told me that you know, you've got to be prepared, you've got to be very, very cool and chilled about these kind of things. And you know what, you've got to be enjoying these things. And you know when I say these things, you know what I mean. You've got to be very, very okay and comfortable and it's better to enjoy, you know. Um, he touched me wherever he wanted. He, um, he put his hand all over inside my dress, even when he started removing it, that is when I, I froze, I froze. I, I didn't know what was happening and I was really, really young and I was like too many thoughts in mind and then I finally told him that, look, I am not good with this and he stopped and he said, you know what, if you really want to work in this industry, I don't think so, you've got the right attitude. But she says it happened again this time when she met a director. He said, I saw your pictures, I thought you have great ass assets, but I don't see that right now, so I want to see it. So can you please remove your clothes? Um, and then he started telling me that um, for an actress, you should be happy to have sex as and when possible. Embrace your sexuality, use it. This is your biggest, biggest weapon you may say he just came towards me and he said come on remove your clothes i want to see i want to see your assets and he started doing that he started removing it and uh, it's too uncomfortable for me to speak further but yeah did you ever think of going to the police the answer that i got from the uh, police that personal was that that they are filmy people he probably meant that law doesn't apply to you know filmy people they are people from some different world and it's just okay fine it happens why are you afraid to go public with these stories if someone speaks up everybody trashes the girl and say that the girl is publicity hungry she has no talent and probably has nothing to do and probably she ha wants money. 
being asked for sexual favours in return for film roles isn't a new thing. It even has a term, casting couch. But it's the sort of thing which lurks in the background of the film industry. People concede that it happens, but no one wants to be the one to talk about it, let alone deal with it. Usha Jadev's been in the film industry for a decade and won a national award for her role in the film Doug. Yeah, this is my national film award. She's one of the few actresses who's willing to go public about how she's faced the so-called casting couch. I think it's time now. We need to come out and talk about our own experiences because, yeah, I faced it, I'm still facing it, and if um, I can come out and talk about my experiences, maybe others will come too and talk about their experience. Usha may have won accolades for her work, but she still gets propositioned by directors and says one even threatened her when she refused. He just said bluntly, OK, uh, see, I like you, you know that, but I need uh, this sexual relation with you. And, if you. and I said, no, that you are saying no, then I'm not going to cast you in my film. And on the top of that, he cursed me. She said, no, you're not going to get any good roles and nothing good, ever, good will happen to you and this and that. And I was like, I don't think you have that much power. Most of Bollywood's big names have stayed silent on the issue of harassment. But Radhika Upde is one who is speaking out. A sought-after leading lady, she's also faced unwanted advances. This year, she scored her biggest hit in the blockbuster Padman, alongside Akshay Kumar. The film was on the unconventional topic of access to sanitary products. Both on and off screen, Radhika is a champion for women's rights. I have started talking about it openly, but to be very honest with you, I do empathise with every, all those people who are very scared to talk about things. So people are so scared. Because here, some people are regarded as gods. They're so powerful that just people just don't think that my voice is going to matter, or people don't think that if I speak, probably my career is going to get ruined. In other countries, some of the countries, you, you, if you want to be an actor or you want to be a part of the film industry, there's a process. You study, you work towards it, and there's a lot to do with your talent and where you come from, what, they, what you've studied, and they pick you up from that school or, you know. Hey, it doesn't work like that. We did not have a system. So everything was based on how are your personal contacts, how are your, how's your social con conduct, or how do you present yourself, or how do you look, or what are you ready to do. And unfortunately, in our country, Bollywood has regarded as this massive, glorious, glamorous thing that everybody wants to be a part of. And it's not being uh, demystified yet. When you saw Hollywood and that Me Too moment that happened, what were you thinking here? in Bollywood. The way the women, and the men of course, came together and decided that as a team we are not going to let this happen. I wish that could happen here. Kalki Caitlin is the other big name actress who's broken her silence and talked to us about harassment. There is conflict and confusion in our minds. In the past she's talked openly about how she was abused as a child and empathises with the young actresses who are scared to share their own Bollywood horror stories. One, people don't listen to you if you're nobody. Two, if you're a celebrity and you talk a bit about it, it only becomes a headline, uh, a shocking headline, and not really content about what's happening to everybody, but only about that particular celebrity. Plus, you're, you're dealing with uh, hundreds of people then throwing their opinions at you, uh, and it can really shake a person em emotionally. Uh, so it's, it, it is a very difficult step to take. In Indian society, there are limitations. But for any real dialogue to happen, Kalki also believes that men need to get on board. Abuse of power. I think it's, more, it's also about that because women and men get sexually harassed. It's not only women. And it's really important to recognize that this is not a gender battle, women against men. This is a battle against power and against the idea that once you get to a powerful position, you can do whatever you want. Fahan Akhtar is an actor, director and singer who comes from a well-known film family. 
His mother is actress and screenwriter Hani Irani. His father, the lyricist Javed Akhtar. Of women As the founder of the Men Against Discrimination and Rape campaign, Fahan Akhtar is one of the few men in the industry willing to speak out. Because we are mud, men against rape and discrimination. It's a very difficult industry to break into. So I, I can completely understand that there would be people who are out there just waiting to take advantage of, of people as and when they can. Um, and it's an unfortunate reality. Hopefully it will change and it will only change through people, I guess, women speaking up. Um, some amount of shaming happening, I guess, that will put some fear into people's hearts. Um, and yeah, so I mean, I, I would just trust the women when they say that it, it exists. I absolutely agree. At what point do you think there will be a tipping point where Bollywood has its Me Too moment? You know, I, I think it's, it's on its way already. I feel there's enough awareness there's enough dialogue, there's enough, um, apart from just social awareness, I think there's enough awareness that at least from all the people that we speak to, collaborate with, if there has to be some kind of a revolution and a change, um, there has to be courage behind it. I mean, there's no other way of doing it, you know, so um, it's, it's, I mean, it's difficult to force someone to do something. Uh, it's um, very easy to just tell somebody else, why don't you go ahead and do it? You know, but um, the fact is that I, I do believe that if people uh, and if women do speak out, that they will find people to support them um, and stand behind them and stand with them. Uh, that's, that will happen. So I, I, I just feel it's a matter of time. Many say things won't change as long as Bollywood remains a male-dominated industry, where on-screen portrayals of women feed into the sexist culture. One example is the Bollywood item number, a song and dance sequence where a leading lady takes centre stage. The woman is often scantily clad as she's lusted after by a group of men. For what are meant to be family films, these are very sexual portrayals. Cleavages have to be shown, ties have to be shown, and uh, it's obvious, it's very clear. I mean, you know, women are treated and considered objects of desire and that's what is sold to the common public and the public also enjoys seeing all that. Aruna Rajay is an industry veteran who's broken many moulds. She was the first trained woman technician in Bollywood and is now one of the few female directors behind the lens. She says she was once propositioned by a leading music producer and that she's faced casting couch throughout her career. No control over your libido, no control over your hands, no control over your feelings, no control over your emotions. I mean, you can propose to a girl. I mean, if she is consensual, sure, go ahead and do what you want. But, I mean, you can't just take advantage of women, girls. The problem in Bollywood is there is no, there's no checks and measures. There is no justice cell. I mean, you cannot go for a dress to any place. Like in the academics you will have, or in the offices you will have, because that's the law of the land. I mean, you're supposed to have a sexual harassment cell which deals with these issues, but I haven't heard of any single cell so many years happening in Bollywood. In a business which attracts young and ambitious hopefuls, there's still very little support and few mechanisms for anyone to report abuse. Until the most powerful in the industry come together and accept there's a problem, then Bollywood's unlikely to come up with a solution. The main groups representing Bollywood producers and directors didn't respond to our request for a comment on the issue. People are fascinated with Bollywood. And if you ask 10 people out of 10, I think seven at least will say that, okay, they want to become a part of Bollywood, they want to work in Bollywood in some way or, uh, or the other. Bollywood, everything has to look pretty and polished and shiny and blingy and, you know, everything has to look beautiful and perfect and uh, there's so much stuff that goes behind each film and uh, so many, not just broken hearts, broken hearts, broken bodies, broken minds, I don't know, all the stuff that goes on. Very unfortunate but true. I thought that Bollywood is this dreamy place. I figured out that not not uh, always good one wins. You know, it needs both genders to come in, uh, into play. Both men and women need to be having a dialogue with each other, not against each other. That's really important.
that's it's a very slow turn. It's, it has to be very uh, smart and slow uh, turn, which comes through awareness, comes through participation. Many people I've spoken to feel that Bollywood won't have its own Me Too moment until there are more women in power in the film industry and in Indian society as a whole. Until then, the issue of sexual harassment in Bollywood remains the one story few want to tell. Bollywood's dark secret.